Hey everyone, welcome back to Garnet Reviews. At last year, Fort Lauderdale's International Boat Show, I was able to get on board this 2021 Krogan Express 52. This boat has been used as a demonstrator of what's possible in ordering a new example today. She measures in at 57 feet 6 inches in length. She's got a beam with 15 feet 11 inches and a draft of around 4 feet. The extended bathing platform makes it easy if you're into swimming, diving, but also for getting on and off that tender. I love the woodwork finish that's on this inside and out. It gives that really nice quality accent feature to it. And as much as this yacht has got all the aesthetics of a yacht, it's certainly been designed for heavy seagoing use. She's got a raised bow, but she's also got really high guardrails, and they're at a natural height that it's easy to hold on to as you make your way up to the bow. Here you're going to find an electric windlass that can be operated at the bow, but it can also be operated at the lower helm and the flybridge. This one's got non-slip deck material and it works really well. And as I pan the camera around you'll appreciate that beam, but you're also going to appreciate the low bridge clearance. With everything up, the bridge clearance is around 20 feet, but with the mast down it's less than 17, so this is capable of doing a great loop. I like how wide the decks are for heading back to the aft cockpit, and I also like the fact that this one does have easy deck access from the lower helm to both the port and starboard side. That's great when you're doing the close quarter manoeuvring, but it's also going to be beneficial going through the lock gates. You also see that wooden trim that we've got along the coach roof. Again, just giving that quality accent feel to it. And the coach roof is also at a nice height that would be ideal to sit out on, but you could also do a spot of fishing off the side of this one. Even more so when you're anchored up. And as I make my way aft to the aft cockpit, there is a little bit of an overhang from the flybridge, and this one actually had lights installed underneath it, so I'd imagine this one's really impressive lit up at night. There's plenty of room in the aft cockpit for entertaining family and friends. There's also a large lazarette. And then when you step inside, you have got some of the best liveaboard accommodation I've seen in a boat of this size. I love how big the windows are. There's so much natural light coming through here. Most of the windows are opening, so you've got extra ventilation and fresh air. The cockpit table in the saloon has got the leafs that open out, and this can be used as an extra double berth if you need to. Very comfortable leather recliners to port. There's even a little footrest between the two. And this is somebody's personal yacht, so I wasn't able to open up a lot of the different storage options from the lockers and drawers and things like that, but you see that storage is abundance on this one. Full height fridge freezer, plenty of countertop space. You got a large stainless steel sink. And for this one, she's got 370 gallons of fresh water on board. She also carries 700 gallons of fuel and 90 gallon holding tank capacity. But you see we've got the stove as well as the convection microwave oven. And I like the fact you've got an open porthole right at the galley, especially if you're going to be cooking. Moving forward, a few short steps up and this takes you to the pilot house. The pilot house has got great visibility for doing extended cruising. And when you order this yacht brand new, you've got a range of options available to you. This one in particular has been well equipped. It's got bow and stern thrusters, it's got stabilizers, it's got the twin multifunction displays, autopilot, generator, and so much more. It's hard to describe the price from a new build perspective because the specification really can impact that, but as a very generic ballpark figure, you're looking at around two and a half million dollars for this yacht brand new. And you'll notice there's a lot of features on here for seagoing passage making, and not only do you have the handhold down the ceiling, but we've also got a large seating area behind the helm, and this also converts out to being a perfect watch berth. And it's also a great spot for your friends and family to be right next to you while you're underway. And every possible option for storage that is available, let's make use of the space, including underneath that table. And as I mentioned earlier, I also like the fact that you've got the easy access to the deck on both the port and starboard side. Getting access to the flybridge couldn't be easier, it's just a few short steps up. And I'm glad of how easy it is to get up here because I would imagine a lot of the owners are going to spend time cruising from up here rather than just using it for close quarter manoeuvring. There's plenty of space up here to walk around and move around. On the aft of the flybridge we do have that solid rigid inflatable boat. We've got the deck crane up here. Plenty of seating up here for your family and friends to enjoy time out here. And that mast does drop down, so as I say, this one is capable of doing a great loop. It's all on hinges and it's easily accessible to lower when needed. 
But if you notice that the helm, this one's been fully equipped with pretty much the same range of electronics that we have down below. And underneath all the cockpit seating, there's plenty of storage up here. And the cushions are also easily removable if you wanted to keep them inside when the boat's not in use. So at the helm, you've got your multifunction displays, you got your autopilot, you got your bound stern thruster, you got your full engine instrumentation, you get stabilizer controls. And I love the fact that it's got a rudder angle indicator. I don't know why these aren't on every boat, but it's on this one. And it helps give you that extra confidence whenever you're at the helm. And as I head back down, again, I really appreciate the woodwork that's on this one. I haven't found a single spot or blemish throughout the entire boat. It's so professionally well done. Then it's just a few short steps down from the pilot house, takes you to the lower accommodation. You're going to find the owner's stateroom on the bow, and there's a tremendous amount of headroom in here. I'm six foot two, I had absolutely no issues at all. There's also a lot of natural light from that overhead hatch. But we've also got opening portholes that's on the front of the bulkhead. There's a mixture of the woodwork as well as other materials in here, but it's got a really bright, airy feeling to it. I always love when it's got an island berth because it's easily accessible from either side. The large mirror also helps make the stateroom feel bigger than it actually is. So you don't have that claustrophobic feeling. And you can see we've got plenty of hanging locker space, drawers, cabinets, things like that in here. And of course, as you'd come to expect, this one is fully en suite. And in here they've done a great job where the toilet and the shower is not only separate, but the shower's also got a, like a little bench seat moulded into the fibreglass, so you can sit down there or you can stand up. You've got the granite countertop, and enough storage in here for your toiletries and personal belongings. As a head aft, we also have a day head and guest head compartment in here, and then even in here the toilet and the shower are separate, and again the shower's got that moulded step into it. So that way you can sit down, stand up, but your guests can feel as much comfort as you do as well. And both the head compartments on board, they've got the opening porthole, and that way if you're taking a shower or whatever, you can let out the steam. Just little things like that help overcome dampness on the boat, and help keep the boat in tip-top condition for long-term use. And as I step out here, you see we've got the laundry facilities. This one's got both a washer and a dryer on board. We also have a guest cabin, you can convert this so it's got a double berth, but it's also got a nice desk area that you could turn into a mini office. And this one's actually got a bunk along the top that drops down as well. And this would be a great one to consider for doing something like the Great Loop where you need to live on a boat for say a year at a time, because you have got everything you could possibly imagine right at your fingertips. So much comfort, so much space, so much privacy. You've got all your main appliances that you would expect to find at home. And obviously the yacht's fully air-conditioned throughout. And also the fact it's got easy engine room access. As standard, this one's powered by twin Yanmar 440 horsepower diesels. And I was told that this was good for 4 gallons per hour at 8 knots and 28 gallons per hour at 16 knots. And there is more than enough space in here for doing all your day-to-day -day engine checks as well as performing your routine service and maintenance. And as you've heard me say plenty of time in these videos, the more easy access you have for performing the maintenance, the more likelihood the maintenance will take place. So I would expect a really long engine life from buying one of these boats. And down here you also see we've got a Northern Lights generator. As standard these are 12 kilowatt generators and they are located within the sound shield. And then lastly as I pan the camera around you're going to see we've got the ABT track stabilizer controls. And everything's clearly labelled and clearly accessible. I'd like to thank them for the opportunity to come on board and film this one and share the video with you. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. If you can leave a comment down below. If you haven't done so already, if you can hit that like and subscribe button. It really does make a difference. I look forward to catching you on the next one. Thanks everyone.